grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship in expanded community of First Presbyterian Church, San Anselmo. We're so glad you're here. We say expanded community knowing that we are gathered here together in this place on 72 Kensington Road in San Anselmo and up and down the rest, West Coast and really across, across the nation. Um, as we gather today, I wanna to thank you. Thank you for all the love that, and uh, sympathy that you've extended to my family during our time of loss. Your prayers have been felt and we deeply appreciate it. We appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all those who gathered in this place to surround Irene Ng's family yesterday with love as we remembered and celebrated her life and leaned into the sure hope that we have in resurrection. Thank you to all of those who were here the day before in the midst of the storm as our wall sprung a leak. Yeah, so we raised the roof. Thanks be to God, that was wonderful. But in the storm, the roof that's over there leaked in there. So thank you to John Copperthwaite and to Dave and especially to Carl and everybody else who was scurrying about to, to make this a safe place for the Ng family to gather. So here we are on the eve of Thanksgiving week as we move towards that national holiday where we give thanks. We have brought that into our worship so that on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, it is a part of our regular life, making sure that in the course of the year, we stop at least once, at least once, to give thanks for the goodness of God. Friends, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God. I'm gonna invite Rebecca to come and lead us in our call to worship. As we gather together in the body of Christ, Please join me in the call to worship. The earth is God's and all that is in it. The world and those who live in it. Come, let us praise God who has blessed the world with God's abundance. Let us celebrate the many ways in which God has touched our lives. God is always with us, offering blessing and hope, comfort and peace. Praise be to the God of harvest and hope, of joy and salvation, God in the midst of us, everywhere, all the time. With, with thanksgiving thanksgi and with praise, come, let's worship God. Come, let's worship God, let's rise in body or in spirit as we sing our opening hymn, We Gather Together, and that's hymn number 336 in your hymnals.
Please join me in prayer as we confess our need for God. Loving God in a world full of anxiety and fear, sometimes we stumble by without noticing your abundant goodness. And yet, even in times of trouble, morning by morning, you greet us with love and tender mercy. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your abounding grace reaches out to us, surrounds us, fills us, embraces us, and holds us close. Give us hearts of gratitude, open and ready to see your goodness in the world, even in the midst of the struggle, so that we might give you thanks and praise and live the abundant life we have in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me as we affirm and give thanks for God's abounding grace. Give thanks to God, for God is good. Morning by morning, God brings new mercies. All that we need for each day, God's hand provides. Forgiveness, healing, freedom, love, and peace. All that we need for the living of each day, and then again for the next. Friends, let us proclaim God's good news together. In, In the, the creating, creating, sustaining spirit of, of the, the risen Christ, Christ we, we are forgiven, loved, and set, set free. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen, and assured of God's grace. This is the time in our worship service where we exchange words and signs of peace with each other. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put the camera on us here. <laughs> we need... Well... We're going to wave to our siblings in Christ online. You can trust that we're doing that. And then for those of you who are at home, we trust that you're waving peace right back at us. That is just one of those mysteries that just pops up every now and then. So friends, if you are online, if you are online in just a moment, Mary Catherine will make it so that you can unmute your microphones and exchange words of peace with each other there as we do the very same in this room. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. I don't know how that happens. Well, good morning, everyone. When they put up the good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Joan. Good morning. Have to unmute if you if you get to talk. He's of the Lord. Jesus. Oh no, I guess you can talk. You can say good morning because they unmuted. Yeah, I think I can. You can say good morning. Oh, I, yeah, I yes. did. Good morning. Yeah. It's good to see you, John. How are you doing? Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. you <laughs> it's Mary Catherine talking. Oh, Mary. Yes. It's good to see you. We can't figure out how to do gallery. <laughs> this is. Well, we're 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 glad she's here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We see her, and we're glad she's here. Good, 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 good. Yeah. We're seeing the sanctuary, and everybody move around saying hello. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here, and you're there. <laughs> you know that. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving. And to you as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. What wonderful sounds. Thank you. Finally got some sunshine. This is the time where we are led in worship by our children, so this time is especially for you. Everett, Anders, Paula, Sheha, Shihu, Shira, Phoebe, Quentin, Hannah, L, Ashley, Emery, Joanna, whether you are worshiping with us in this room or whether you're with us online, whether you're a child or a child at heart, this time is for you. 
welcome, welcome, welcome. And Miss Ann, can I come and sit by you and Miss G? Uh, that's good. I'll sit right in here. So I'm kind of in the middle. So we've got a holiday coming up this week. What is it? Halloween. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So what was that? Halloween. <laughs> Christmas isn't too far away, but Thanksgiving is the next one up. So what are, what are some of the things that we do on Thanksgiving? We eat food, we eat turkey, and we give thanks. Thank you for hitting all of the ones. So, you know, this is about, this is a holiday where we think about giving thanks and saying thank you. So I brought something here. Do you all know what this is? Look at this. A thank you card, yes. So sometimes when somebody does something nice for you, one of the things that's really polite and kind and the gift back to them is to write a little note mm -hmm. to say, dear friend, thank you so much for that nice thing that you did. It made me feel so good. It's lovely. So it's Thanksgiving and I've got this little thank you card, but I thought we should go big on Thanksgiving. So I got us a big thank you card. Do you want to hold that? And I thought we could just write it out here right now. Yeah, just think of some of the things that we're thankful for and we'll, we'll figure out a way to write them down. Okay, great. So it says thank you and the inside's blank. What are, let's just think of some of the things. What are some of the things that you like about church? Anything? Community, community. So I'm gonna write community on the card. Thank you God for community. What else? What else do you like about church? What else? The pretzel prayer. I, do you think I can draw a pretzel? Uh, it's going to look like a heart, isn't it? Now you're seeing that Scott is not an artist, but that's a pretzel. That's a pretzel. What else? You know, I love our music. So thank you choir for music. And I'm going to draw, I know I can draw this. I'm going to draw an eighth note. There you go. What else? What else do you like about church? I'm thankful for Carl. For Carl. Let's give Carl a hand. We love Carl and all the people who make worship happen, like the worship team and Miss Maureen who does the flowers and the ushers who greet us. What else do we like about church? He has an answer. Everett, what do you think? family. That is right, family. And we, like our, we love our church family. Thank you, God, for our church family and for our family family. Yeah, that's great. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you this thank you card. Thank you, church. Thank you, choir. Thank you, church. And you can take that with you. And Reverend Grace has some other thank you, uh, uh, give, uh, thank you activities, and this will be a part of it. But you can continue to, to fill that out, to draw what you want, to write. You could write poems if you want, um, but words of thanks. And then I've got one more thing for you. So today, as part of our giving thanks, we're going to have, we're going to take up our regular offering, and uh, the grown-ups are going to... Uh, have an opportunity to give pledges, but we got something that is a gift for everybody to take home. So you know in the offering usually you come up and give something, but this is a gift for us to take home. So Everett, do you want to take one of those? There you go. And Reverend Grace, everybody, and then everybody else, we're going to be in the room, so we'll get one. Miss Ann, don't worry. Miss Gina, don't worry. We're going to be there. Dr. Conant, don't worry. You will get one. But this is a heart. And this is just a, a sign of our church family, our church family, and our commitment to be family together. Okay, so you've got this. And while we're looking at our hearts and thinking about love, hearts, exactly. Let's say the pretzel prayer. Okay. Oh, and she has her hand up. She is ready. Okay. God, I love you. God, I love you. Help me to love others. Help, Help me to love others. others. As you love me. As you love me. Amen. Amen. Okay. So our scriptures today, not surprisingly, are about gratitude. So the invitation is just to listen to this psalm to the choir's anthem, and to this lovely favorite passage from Philippians, um, and experience the gratefulness and the gratitude that are being expressed. 
and uh, maybe to express and hold in your heart gratitude of your own. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Serve God with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that God is God. It is God who made us, and we are God's. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. Our second scripture is from Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in God always. Again, I will say rejoice. 
Let your gentleness be known to everyone. God is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, siblings, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them and the peace, God of peace will be with you. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Loving God, you have created all that is, and you've loved your creation from the very beginning, even until now, and we give you thanks and praise. Be with us now as we draw near to your word. Open our hearts that we might experience your love and be transformed by your grace. Amen. I am wary, I'm wary of a scripture that begins, don't be anxious about anything. <clears throat> I'm wary because there is plenty in the world to be anxious about right now. That is such an understatement. I am wary about a scripture that begins, don't be anxious about anything because I am an anxious person. <laughs> I am hardwired to worry. And I'm wary about a scripture that begins, don't be anxious about anything because, well, when has that ever worked? When has it ever made anyone less anxious by simply saying, don't worry? In fact, that usually has the opposite effect on me when I'm anxious and someone says, don't be anxious, don't worry, that just makes me more anxious. That's another thing I'm not getting right. I'm wary of a scripture that begins like that, but I am willing to give it a listen. I'm willing to give it a listen because it's the Apostle Paul writing. And he's writing it in his letter to the Philippians, and we know because we've talked about Philippians before that the Apostle Paul is writing this from prison. He's writing it from prison, charged with capital crimes against the empire. He's writing from a prison that we know, we know he will never leave. So from out of that context, when he writes, don't be anxious about anything, it's so surprising and startling that I am willing to give him a listen. This is not the Apostle Paul we are used to hearing. The Apostle Paul we know from his other letters is often full of holy bombast and bluster, and we love him for that. He has had a transformative experience of the risen Christ, and he gets it. The Apostle Paul grasps how radically expansive the good news of Jesus Christ is, God's love more expansive and inclusive than ever we imagined, and so Paul takes off with that good news, with that urgent good news, and he travels the known world, Ephesus, Corinth, Athens, Thessalonica, Philippi, city to city, bringing the good news, forming and shaping and nurturing communities that commit to follow the way of Jesus, and then he's off on to the next city. And as the Apostle Paul travels, he writes these letters back to the communities that he has helped birth and nurture. Some have fallen into disagreement. Some are straying from what he has taught. There are these opponents following him around, trying to undo the good work that he's done. And so Paul writes in urgent defense of the good news. The stakes are high. Everything depends. Everything depends on understanding who Jesus is and who we are in Jesus Christ. That's the Apostle Paul we know, arguing, contending, insisting. But here, the powers have caught up with the Apostle. He's finally been caught up in chains that he cannot escape. And he's sent in those chains to Rome to be tried. 
And that's where he writes this letter from prison in Rome. And this letter is different. For the most part, it's not his typical urgent, no holds barred defense. It is at heart a thank you letter, a lovely, loving expression of gratitude. You see, it appears that one of those little communities that he's nurtured, they hear of his imprisonment and they send help. In those days, prisoners had to provide their own support, and so the community in Philippi sends money so that he will not starve to death in prison. Not only that, they send someone. They send someone to go and care for him, to go and advocate for him. Epaphrod Epaphroditus, aren't you glad I didn't give you that to pronounce, Rebecca? Epaphroditus. Paul arrives in prison, and there at the jailhouse door is Epaph Epaphroditus, sent by this little community at Philippi to help. And Paul writes back to them, thank you. Thank you for sharing my suffering. Thank you for your deep concern, for your provision, for your partnership. I am amply supplied. Paul writes to thank them and to reassure them, I am okay even in the worst of circumstances and to remind them who they are in Jesus Christ. What you have done for me here, this is who we are in Jesus Christ. Thank you. When we've talked about gratitude before, we've talked about it as a culmination God's grace abounds again and again and again, and our response to that abounding grace is gratitude. Grace and gratitude circling out into the world in ever-expanding circles of generosity like a pebble dropped into a pond. We've talked about gratitude as the culmination of all that. And, and here, Paul is talking about gratitude as the very beginning from prison, in the midst of the worst that empire can do, don't be anxious about anything. Ground yourself in gratitude. God is near. In prayer with thanksgiving, let the, all that is on your heart be made known to God. Ground yourself in thanksgiving in the goodness of God. That is your steady place to stand even in the worst of times. When we've talked about gratitude before, we've noticed that gratitude is a feeling, a whole body response to the experience of receiving life as a gift. We've noticed that gratitude is an action. We do something in response to grace. It sets in motion a pattern of reciprocity. And we've noticed that eventually, gratitude can become an ethic, a way of living in the world with generous and open hearts. To all that this morning, I want to add this because I think it's the heart of the Apostle Paul's gentle word here. Gratitude also is a particular form of attention. Gratitude is a particular form of attention. I get this from Robin Wall Kimmerer, author of Braiding Sweetgrass, who has a new book out. A lot of us have read Braiding Sweetgrass, so I know you're going to be excited about this. She's got a new book out that's called The Service Berry, Abundance and Reciprocity in the Natural World. I've heard her interviewed. I can't wait to read it. Robin Wall Kimmerer draws, indigenous draws on indigenous understandings and says that modern culture has robbed us of our capacity to stand in the world with broad and expansive attention. We're transfixed by the news and social media and our phones, the cacophony of the anxious world, and that's all we can see and hear. She suggests taking a breath and standing in the world with quiet, expansive attention, seeing the world whole. In her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, as an example, she offers an indigenous Thanksgiving address, a litany that considers the earth and gives thanks, that considers the waters and gives thanks, that considers all those who have come before us 
and gives thanks, that considers those who are around us and gives thanks, that considers the plants that give us air and gives thanks, and so on and so on and so on. Those of us who read the book, you may remember the Thanksgiving address goes on for pages and pages of gratitude. David Stendhal Rast writes that gratitude begins with surprise. He says we live in a world of givens, so much of the world that feels like it's thrust upon us that we can't control, that is our context, and he says there's also so much of life that is a gift. The givens of life and the gift of life, neither one negates the other. Stendhal Rast encourages us, though, not to forget the gift part, the surprise. Right there in the midst of things, the sun rises. The next breath comes. Someone reaches out a hand to hold. The powers that hold us down crumble just a bit. He reminds us to look past the predictable husk of things to their core and find there a kernel of surprise. Isn't that lovely? I appreciate very much what Devira had to say about enough, enough last week. Kara Root, in her book, The Deepest Belonging, says that there are two narratives at work in the world. There's the narrative of scarcity. It's the dominant narrative. This dominant narrative views the world as fixed and limited. It is about competition and consumption. Having more is always better. Rugged individualism is a value. Self-sufficiency is everything. Jesus, she says, Jesus with his kingdom of God talk introduces an alternative reality, one that looks to God's abundance. This alternative narrative of God's abundance sees life as a gift the love and abundance of God as something to be shared in this alternative life is about interdependence and mutuality, connection and communion. Daily, she writes, daily we are given many, many chances to choose which way will we live, which message will we believe, which reality will define us. This alternative narrative of gratitude, mutuality, and sharing is how the Apostle Paul can sit in prison, realistic about the hardships he faces and receive this tender care from this community he has loved and write, thank you, thank you, God is near. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. Be anxious for nothing. Pray your needs to God with thanksgiving. Paul directs their attention. If anything is true, if anything is worthy, if anything is just, if anything is pure, if anything is pleasing, if anything is commendable, think on these things. Ground yourselves there. This alternative narrative of gratitude, generosity, and sharing is why each week here, as we stand in the midst of things and take them seriously and honestly, as we seek to do the work that is ours to do, even when it is hard and daunting work every week in the midst of all that, we also so ask, and what is one thing for which you are grateful? We ground ourselves there. Here's something I'm grateful for. I was away this past week, back home in Alabama, part of a grieving and heartbroken family. Been back now a couple of days, and I have realized that every single meal that I ate over the course of that week was a gift. On the night I arrived in Alabama, there was a neighbor at the doorstep bringing a pot of hastily made chicken and dumplings. As she left, she promised to be back in the morning with breakfast pastries, and there at 9.30, just as she has promised, there she was the next morning. There were deli platters so we could make our lunches. There was a charcuterie plate where the vegetables had been cut and the meat arranged to all look like flowers. Folks brought salads because with all those meats, cheese, and pastries, when other people asked what they could bring, we started to just say salad. 
There was ham bone soup. There was, of course, cornbread. For those of you who don't know, I'm from the South. And then there was, of course, more cornbread. For a week, every meal that I ate was a gift. Now, none of this changed the heartbreaking reality that we are living. But for those tender mercies, we are deeply grateful. And then I returned here to this community where we were preparing to surround Irene Ng's family with love and tender care. The deacons were doing what the deacons do, helping with the reception, baking brownies, helping set up tables. Carl and John were in here trying to figure out what to do with that leak coming in from the memorial garden so that the space would be welcoming and hospitable for the family. Natsuko was practicing her music through all of this. I don't know how you did it, Natsuko, (laughs) because this room was just full. Maureen was quietly arranging the flowers. Choosing to embrace and live out lives of gratitude, generosity, and sharing, it is a radical, subversive act. It is to undermine the dominant narrative. It is to say, no, I choose. I choose to live in a world that looks like this. I choose to live to build a world where those who mourn are comforted, where those who are refugees far from home find shelter, where those who are hungry are fed, where those who are lonely are companioned, where the unjust systems of the world inexorably bit by bit are dismantled so that everyone can live free. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, think on these things. Give your full attention to these things. In just a moment, when we take up our offering, we will do all the things that we do and then some, and it may look a bit of a mess. We're going to take up the morning offering this morning, and as the ushers do that, folks will bring their cans for the food bank. It's a sensibility Sunday, so I'm going to put the basket up there so that folks can bring gifts to help with our hunger action projects. We'll bring our pledges for the coming year to support all the life that we do here. I'm going to invite us to receive the little gift that I told the children about. Natsuko is going to play the offertory. We're going to offer our prayers of gratitude. We will do all these things, and we will ground ourselves again in a baseline of gratitude, generosity, and sharing. We will say this. This is who we are in Jesus Christ. But let's give the last word to the Apostle Paul. There he sits in prison and Epaphroditus arrives with a gift from the little community that he loves in Philippi and Paul writes back, thank you, thank you. Rejoice in God always. Again, I say rejoice, let your gentleness be made known to everyone. God is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. So friends, as we, as we move into our time of prayer, I'm just going to ask uh, that gratitude question to get us started. Uh, and the way I'm going to ask it is to invite you to think back over the last 24 or 72 hours, the last two or three days, and think of some good some good that you experienced that you did not create and that you did not earn. Think of some good 
that you have experienced. Think some of what or who was the source of that good. And during our time of prayer, think about how you might express gratitude for that good grace. I'm going to ask Natsuko to give us maybe 10 seconds and then lead us into the song. We'll have more times of silence and then I'll lead us in a prayer of words. God of love and grace and every good gift, you created all that is in love. We thank you for stars and sun and moon, for soaring mountain and roaring ocean, for birds and fish and all the creatures that roam the earth, for fresh air to breathe and cool sips of water to refresh the day. We thank you for the bright light of morning, for the quiet you bring at the dimming of the day, for the festival of color we experience in the autumn leaves. Help us care for your earth. Help us from doing creation. Keep us from doing creation further harm. Help us to live grateful lives of sustaining tender care. We thank you for the blessings of life, for the gift of each other, for family and community, for lives of meaning and purpose, for the work that is ours to do, for meals that sustain, for nurses and doctors who help us heal, for a place to call home. Help us reimagine with you a world that is loving and just. Help us dismantle systems that oppress, particularly systems of American racism. Help, help us welcome the stranger, particularly those who are seeking safe refuge. Help us make sure everyone has enough to live and to thrive. Help us work for a world of peace and an end to war. Help us see each other's need, the needs of the world, and respond in love. We pray for those who are hurting, for healing, for those who are hungry, food enough and more, for those who are unhoused, safe shelter, for those who are lonely, a friend, for those who mourn, deep, abiding comfort. 
Thank you for loving us through the whole of life and on out into forever. Thank you for your faithfulness across the generations. Thank you for your love for us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the communion of saints, for the blessing of community, for all those who have called on your name in every time and place with them. We lift our voices to you in prayer and praise and thanksgiving, praying the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, and again, welcome. We're so glad you're here. A very special welcome to anyone for whom it may be your first time or one of your first times visiting either here or online. We're so glad you're here. We hope that as you experience this community, you'll experience a community of diverse spiritualities so that you know wherever you are on your spiritual journey, there is a place for you here. Uh, I have one additional word of thanks. When I thanked everybody who had helped out while I was away, thank you to Reverend Devira Haddon. We are trained as ministers to step into the last, last minute and preach. It's not easy to do when you find out on Thursday. And so, Devira, thank you. Thank you as a colleague. I'm very deeply grateful. Um, we have a number of opportunities to be together um, over the course of the week. The first one will be right after worship. We have a Sunday seminar well, where we'll be uh, returning to the topic of hope. Um, and Royce will be leading that. So get coffee starting at 11.30, 11.30 sharp. Um, here and online. You can just stay online um, if you'd like to join us that way, but that'll be there. Um, we have Advent coming up next Sunday, and so as we prepare for Advent and Christmas, um, I'll give you a hint. Our theme is going to be, and hear the angels sing. It's from a, a line in, it, uh, it came upon a midnight clear, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. Uh, but one of the things to be thinking about now is if you'd like to ha dedicate a poinsettia, um, the, the forms will be out more, is that right, in the, in the narthex for you, and you can participate in that. Um, we have opportunities to be together over the course of the week. There are regular gatherings throughout the week. Um, in addition to our regular slate of gatherings, remember that the women's gathering is going to be on Saturday. Y'all help me out here. I didn't get it up on the slide. It's Saturday, December, December 7th. Saturday, December 7th. Um, and then we have opportunities to be engaged in our justice work um, over the course of, of of the week, uh, you can engage uh, with our um, racial justice group, uh, put food in the community fridge. One change in announcements, we were planning to have our racial justice book group, um, but it won't, oh, that was last week. That was last week, it didn't happen, so I hope you got word about that for those of you who were doing that. And in just a moment, we'll have the opportunity to take up our offering. This is our Sensibility Sunday, and so Jillian's gonna come and tell us a little bit about sensibility, offering, and another seasonal opportunity that we have. Well, one would think that it was Easter with this array of baskets. But there is no Easter Bunny today. It's you that will fill these baskets. So I bring you greetings from the Presbytery uh, Hunger Task Force. Next Sunday, December 1st, there will be a sales table over in Duncan Hall to sell equal exchange. You know about that stuff. Candy bars, good, good chocolate, coffee. You recognize the package. It's time to fill up your larders. Sales profits go straight to the Presbytery's sensibility account and from there to grants that provide food assistance for those in need. Our community fridge on the back porch has been a beneficiary. 
Your dollars have supported gardening and cooking classes at San Pedro School in San Rafael, hot meals in Benicia, and food gift cards are being ordered in McKinleyville for Christmas. We believe donations do the most good when they go back out to those in need. And so our account is down to, for the Presbytery as a whole, the account is down to $2,000 in the bank, only enough for one or two more grants for this year and into the next. Which brings us to today. Today is Hunger and Homelessness Sunday for the PCUSA. Sensibility began through Presbyterian women's groups in 1976 as two cents a meal. Families kept a box on their dining room table and made those penny deck donations to each meal they were blessed with. Times and economies changed, and so has the price of food. The two cents became a nickel a meal, and now is sense ability. Funding local hunger ministries. Food insecurity is still very, very real in Northern California. So, do you have any change today? I dare you to look in your pockets or pocketbooks. Do you have a penny? I looked in mine. I don't even have any pennies anymore. So, what do you have? Nickels, dimes, quarters, one dollar bills, five dollar bills? Small change. Take a chance to give a leg up to subsistence living for someone. Bring all that small change, and I dare you to empty out your pocket and bring all the small change you have up here and put it in the basket. And Alice will hate me forever as she counts out those pennies and has to roll them. <laughs> then, Next Sunday, come with the big bucks or a credit card and shop for equal exchange. And by the way, you can also give to Sensibility through the church website via donations. Did you ever notice that little QR code? I mean, really little QR code at the bottom of the bulletin? That will give you entree to the church website. From there, on the left-hand side of the page, choose more, choose giving, choose giving online. It works 24-7. Thank you so much, Jillian. Thank you, thank you. So I said in the sermon that we'll be doing all the things uh, when we take up the offering. So we'll take up the regular offering. That's the basket for sensibility. Um, you know, sensibility goes to help all of the good programs that Jillian was talking about um, and really is an expression of this community's longstanding, longstanding uh, commitment to hunger action. It's amazing all the ways that you are committed to that. We'll also have the opportunity to bring pledges. So you've heard from the annual giving team over uh, the past few weeks, we've been celebrating with a theme of abundance and joy, talking about God's abundance. You heard Martha come and, get, and, and Vivian come and give. Thank you both uh, for talking about, but talking about all, all the things that we do here, all of the activities that we do in the name of Jesus to worship, um, to serve the world around us. We've thought about all of the groups that inhabit our spaces, the way that this place is filled with music, not only by us singing on Sunday mornings, but by orchestras and choirs, the preschool, um, all of the folks, the, uh, the Cedars program, all of the folks who call this home. I've been your pastor now for five years and I experienced this congregation as amazingly generous. 
amazingly generous. So let this be a time of gratitude. I know there are a lot of ways that you can bring pledges. This is one. If you'd like to bring an envelope and put it there, you could put the envelope in the basket. You can email it in. You've heard of all the ways. And, and as you bring your gifts, we want to offer you a gift. It's a little thing. It's just a, it's a wooden heart, but it's a symbol, if you would like, of your, of our recommitment to each other. So know that this is for you. I'll try and make sure I get it to the back in case um, you want to get it there. But I think we've got all the things. Oh, there's a food barrel so you can bring cans. So um, in this moment, as Natsuko graces us with the beauty of the offertory, as you think about one thing for which you might want to give thanks, we'll now receive our morning offering. Friends, let's rise in body or in spirit to sing together our closing hymn, 367, Come, ye thankful people, come, and we will sing the first, second, and fourth verses.
rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. God is near. Be anxious about nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus as we go Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ behind us, Christ always before us, Christ beside us and all around us, Christ within us, go in peace.